Hello Saxo fans, welcome to episode 47. Right, it's pretty obvious what this video is going to be about. If you've clicked on the thumbnail you would have seen it's all about oil catch can, oil catch tank, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I did touch on it briefly in my last video in that I bought this sort of generic one online but it's just massive. Um, and there's just a few things about it that don't quite work in terms of its orientation as well. So um, I'm going to sort of use this as a basis of design, if you like, uh, and then come up with my own design. So essentially, I've got all the bits I've got here on the table that I need to sort of make my own. Um, but essentially, it's the same bit of tube, uh, albeit uh, stainless. And this is probably a bit too long. I'm going to sort of cut it down on another inch or so. Um, so you can see it's sort of oh, I put it in camera shot. So you can see it's sort of, you know, similar sort of diameter, a bit less, um, and it'll be a bit shorter. So that's essentially the body. Uh, I've already cut out a couple of end caps to go on, which obviously I'll weld on either end. Oops. So yeah, nice and easy, couple of end caps. Um, and also obviously I want it to be AN10 compliant. So on my cam covers, I've obviously got AN10 fittings, which is gonna be these. Already just sort of had a little look at the hoses and see where they're going to root. So a couple of torques, 45 degree AN10 fittings. Um, and then obviously the opposing end for the catch tank. A um, couple of stainless AN10 bosses to weld on. And then a little filter to put on. Obviously way, way smaller than what came with this one. So that's again, you know, going to save space. That's nice and easy. A bit of um, correct size stainless pipe for the filter to mount onto. So obviously I'll cut that right down. Um, this little boss here, an M6 hole in it, is essentially going to be my drain plug. Obviously I'll put like a little washer on there, Dowerty washer or something, or a copper washer to um, enable me to drain the tank out. And then a couple of stainless bolts, which essentially are going to be how I mount the catch tank so I'll put this on here and then just weld those on sort of the wrong way and that'll be my mounting positions. That's essentially what we're going to do. Let me swing you around to the car and I'll show you where it's going to live. All right as you can see then space in the engine bay is at a premium now. There is not a lot of it. So my thought process is with this new catch tank um, this one's actually it's too long so imagine it's an inch or two shorter um, it's going to sit, I think, the best place that I can think of is I'm actually going to mount it just off the intake pipe. Now, obviously, I wanted it here because I need to get to it to drain it, service it, whatever. The intake pipe is nice and easy to get to. I can always remove it just by undoing the circlips down there. So that's probably the best place I can think. I did think about trying to get it over here, but the problem I've got is the bracketry would have to be pretty um, complicated. And then also the feeds are over here. And I could obviously just send them over the top, but I'm trying to make it really neat and tidy. I don't want just like loads of pipes, like, you know, just sort of swinging over the top. It just looks a bit messy. Um, now the best solution for these, uh, I've seen for catch tanks, um, Ben makes them and they go on the inner wing over here where your fuse box is and the pipes come over here. Sam's got one on his. Really nice catch tank design, love that. And I would do that every day of the week if I could. But I've, I've maintained a lot of the standard wiring which means I've kept the standard fuse box. So it kind of puts that um, option off the table for me, hence why I'm going for this sort of yeah, tricky little thing. So anyway, the first thing we'll do then, I'm going to cut this down because it's too long, and then I'll mark on the positions for the A and Ted and the Brie. The Brie is going to go on um, at one end uh, on, on the top, the same as the A and Ted fittings. And then we'll get all it tapped up and we'll, we'll get it mounted down here somewhere and see where it's going to live finally. Anyway, so let's go and measure this up and tack some stuff in place. Well, I just got a bit of the, the stub here for the filter like that but the internal diameter is actually quite small so I just want to open that up and then we can cut this to length.
Well, so I've fully welded that stub on there. I'm, I'm fairly happy with where it's going to be, and obviously everything else can sort of adjust around there. So, so that's on, done and dusted. We'll go and offer it up to the car, and then we'll mark where we want the AN10 fittings to be. Just going to let that cool down for a bit because it's pretty toasty. Right, pretty straightforward in the end. These green marks, I did sort of try it on the car and just sort of experimented a little bit, but actually I think everything in line is probably the best idea. So we'll get these holes drilled for that and that to go there. Something like that, I think, probably the best. I'll just double check the filter depth, the width rather isn't going to be in the way. But yeah, something like that, I think, is probably what we're looking at. Right, quick sanity check before I weld the AN10s on properly. I've only bought two of those, so kind of a one-shot deal. Um, this is really warm at the moment, so I'm be really careful about how I hold this, but in fact, I'm going to pop a glove on. Right, that's better. Okay, just as a quick offer up then, so this is going to go somewhere about that sort of angle. Just off from the pipe, obviously I'll make a bracket so it comes off the pipe. But uh, this one here will be to that one there and that one there. Obviously this pipe's already in place, but it's too long to that one there. And the filter will sort of sit in the crevice of this uh, intake boost pipe. That's roughly about right, I think. Yeah, fairly happy with that. Um, let's go and weld these AN10 fittings on. I wanted to have a check because I've only bought two of those, so it's kind of a one-shot deal. Anyway, let's go and weld those on, and then we can move on to making the pipes up, I think, and just double-checking that all the, the bends are going to be sensible. Right, there we go then, just popped all the fittings on, all just loose at the moment, but just about enough room. Obviously, you're probably looking at this thinking, oh, that's all really quite tight. The fittings are massive, the filter's small, but it is obviously intentionally a small tank. It's probably what, I don't know, 400 mil maybe, 500 mil, something like that. Maybe not even that. Anyway, right, next steps then is get these end caps on. Um, I need to put the drain hole in one of them first um, and to do that I need to identify the orientation on the car which this is going to go so you can see if it sort of sits over at a bit of an angle then I want the drain hole to be at the bottom so I can just undo it and it will empty the tank obviously if it's ever so slightly elevated in any way then it won't empty it completely um, and I'll drill the hole in that first and then probably put the drain on there and then stick it to there. Um, yeah, anyway, I'll have a little think, but essentially end plates and drain plugs are next. Uh, and then it'll just be on to mounting little brackets and stuff like that. So let's get them on, shall we? the end cap welded on it's still very hot so that's on jobs are good and on that so we'll wait for that to cool down obviously this is the drain end filter end 
and it does want to sit up a bit like that so it will naturally pour towards the drain and away from the filter obviously uh, next thing then obviously is to get the the other end on and then we'll weld the mounts in place right there we go then so that's both end plates on drain on and obviously both the uh, fittings on the top and obviously for the oil uh, breather there so the next thing is how do I mount this to the pipe well, my plan is to probably just pop uh, let's do this as an example let's just pop that on there to give me something to mount it on and I'll have like a little triangular piece that mounts down to the uh, boost pipe that I can mount to so fairly straightforward so I'm going to get this welded on both ends and at least I can then go and make a little bracket essentially which welds onto the pipe with a hole in it and a nut and bolt so pretty straightforward so let me get those on and then we'll go and have a look at it on the car right guys I've just offered this up and I'm going to change my mind I'm not super happy with it only because the A and 10 fittings are so large by the time I get this sort of mounted about here and put another 45 degree A and 10 here the, the bend that I'm going to need in the hose is going to be fairly extreme and the hose length's quite short so essentially putting it here would have worked a treat but the AN10s is, is what's sort of scuppering that so what I'm going to do is suck up the pain and I'm going to put it over here so if I use a couple of 90 degree AN10s off the top of those hose over there same with that one nice and easy they'll look they'll look okay <clears throat> the, the tricky thing I've got now is I've got to make a bracket to mount um, up to here somewhere so there's a bit of material down here appreciate the angle you're at you can't really see it but the um, where the harness mounts to the car here uh, there's a nice big chunky bit of metal that essentially isn't used I think it's supposed to be to clip this bit of the harness in but yeah so I'm going to try and sort of steal that to, to mount this over here somewhere so I think that's the next thing to do is, is get this mounted over here and then by the time we've done that the fittings will arrive and we can make the hoses up right i haven't showed the fabrication of that bracket essentially just uh trying to create a nice shape two bolt points there I haven't done this one up yet uh 90 degree bend and up to the mount for the catch tank so that's pretty good fairly happy with that obviously i'll get it all painted and everything so the next thing is to make these hose lengths and we'll see how much movement we've got left uh, in the tank because at the moment obviously it's only mounted up here and it, there is a decent amount of movement in it albeit it's not completely tight yet um, so I might have to utilize the the mount on the back there as well but let's make these tube lengths and we'll see what it looks like right hose is made you'll have to forgive the noise in the background we're having the driveway done at the moment so obviously the, the whacker plates are in use but we'll crack on regardless so these can go on well only, only loose for now because I'm going to take all this stuff off to paint but we'll get it on just to show fitment Oh, there we go then. They're in. Just take you off the stand. So, obviously, I need, I need to run these down properly and tighten everything up. But one thing I was obviously concerned about a moment ago was that this was really wobbly. But actually, now you've got the fittings in place, and obviously, these AN10 hoses are pretty rigid. But there obviously is a bit of flex in it. So, I'll see whether I fancy making up a, another rear mount for it. But I think for now, I'm pretty happy with that. So, and the routing of the hoses is pretty good. It's a real shame it goes over the boost pipe, didn't really want that, but I think that's probably the best place for it. So yeah, done with that. Right, I think I need to make up the, the mount for this, because this is still wobbling around. So I'll do that, and then all of this can come off and we'll get it all painted. Let's get that done, and we'll set up for paint.
There we go then. Painted, jobs are good and done and dusted. Not super happy with the paint finish. It's quite orange peeled. I've had way better in the past and I think it's probably a combination of quite old paint I was using, uh, very old hardener. And also I was running at way too high a pressure. I totally forgot to wind the pressure down on my compressor. So I don't know, maybe that's a combination of things. But anyway, I'm still happy with it. It still looks good. So let's get this fitted. There we go then. Catch tank fitted. All tidy. I haven't put the boost pipes in yet. I just need to get all the clamps and everything sorted out. But I'll do that in a bit. Um, but yeah, that's all in. Jobs are good and... So, uh, that's it for this episode. I think in the next one, we're probably going to have a start thinking about exhaust. Because I'm quite keen to put all the front end back on. Um, and obviously bolt everything up sort of for the final time. Um, but I can't do that really until, until the exhaust has been made. So, I think next episode is going to be on yeah trying to snake the exhaust out of here somewhere. And I've got a few ideas. Obviously, we'll cross that bridge in the next one. Right, see you then.